Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to our little project, the Stud Pack Dream House Build. We're on phase one, the garage. We've been talking a lot on this channel about the order of operations. What does that mean? Well, sometimes when you're building a building, well, all the time, there are certain things you wanna do before you do other parts to make it easier on yourself. And honestly, we've come forward with this. We are out of order on a few of our things, just like sometimes when you're in the courtroom and you're out of order and the judge reprimands you. Sometimes it's not a big deal and sometimes it's a huge deal. What we gotta deal with today is kinda right in the middle. We have three penetrations we have to make in our building specifically a four inch hole. What are those for? One of them is for the intake for fresh air for our ERV. It's gonna be right here, tucked under the eave on the north side of our building. The other two are exhaust. They're gonna be way over here under the eave on the west side of the building. We have one for the bathroom exhaust and the exhaust for the ERV. Just so you can get your bearings, I'm on the shed roof in the back of the house and right on the other side of this gable end is that attic space above the stairs where we had the ERV tucked in and those three access panels. You guys remember that, right? And so one of those hoses for the ERV is gonna connect to this on the other side of this wall. So we gotta drill a four inch hole. That's what this is. So I've gotta drill a four inch hole right here and I wanna put it in this freeze as opposed to the siding so that this flushes nice against there. If I put it here, we're gonna have all those gaps that we talked about before where insects can get behind it. And we don't wanna to have to cut this out. And I'd rather have it here, honestly, tucked way up under this soffit. So I've got X marks the spot, and that X is between two of the uprights on our gable end truss, and the top cord of the truss is tucked way up here. So there's nothing in my way, I hope. I mean, structural wise, like wood. Right. Yeah. So I should be able to drill through here, drill through our zip, and then I should be in the foam in that space. So what I'm gonna do, I got my drill, I got a masonry bit, and I just have a piece of threaded rod. I'm gonna drill a hole right there, through the freeze, through the zip. Once I'm in there, I'm gonna tap this through the foam. Jordan or Rad can run up in the attic and see where this is. If I'm clear, we'll follow it all up with a four inch spider hole saw, and then we can just slide this right in, right there. And that's think, only half the battle. Of course, like everything else, right? But I say we start the battle by drilling a hole. Now, before we start drilling a bunch of holes in our building, we want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Element. Element is zero sugar hydration, has everything you need and nothing you don't. There's no sugar in here, no glutens, no dodgy ingredients, and it's vegan friendly and paleo and keto friendly as well. Element is based on a science-backed electrolyte ratio used by all kind of folks, from professional athletes, moms and dads, and folks like us, build in our own house. So Element can help prevent headaches, fatigue, sleeplessness, and muscle cramps. We can't have any of that on the job site, certainly not when we're up on the scaffold, working with our power tools, or lifting heavy things. And we've kind of gotten into the habit of drinking our Element right during lunchtime. And actually, that's about right now, time for my Element. So right now, guys, if you head on over to drinkelement.com slash stud pack, they're gonna hook you up with a free sample pack. Let's dump this one out. We got some awesome flavors in here. Mango chili, that one's killer. This one's raw, unflavored. That's Rad's favorite because it reminds him of the ocean when he wipes out on the surfboard. We got chocolate salt if you want something a little sweeter. My favorite, the raspberry. And this one is orange salt. A lot of awesome flavors. We love it during lunchtime. Helps us get going all day long. So again, drinkelement.com slash stud pack. Thanks again to Element for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to work. Now, I know in the last video, you said we're gonna be painting and we're about to paint this side. Jordan says, Dad, wait a minute. We gotta make all our penetrations because he actually wants to paint all this the color of the siding, right? Of course, right? Of course. And so we're out of order again. All right, I think I'm just making a little cut right through there. There we go. All right, just like I planned. Now let me get this threaded rod. Should have about three or four inches of foam to go through. Let's see. All right, I'm through. Who's gonna be the lucky guy to go tell me if we're good or I'll not? Go, I'll go. All right. Yeah. All right. Oh wow, way up there. You can see the wire covered in foam there. Right there, there's another wire, but I think we'll be okay. We can always move those. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh, nice. Hey. Yeah, we're above all that. Yep. We can always move them. Yep. Send it. Send it. Be the perfect size. Yep. Yep. 
Don't want it to be too loose either for uh, like air leakage and stuff. Right. Are you ready? I am ready. Then go. I'm especially ready. I know we talk about these a lot, but these spider hole saws are awesome. Drilling through this hardy with a regular bimetal saw would chew it up. And that's most of my hole saws down there are bimetals that are chewed up. But man, these spiders just chew through it. And I got a masonry pilot bit, comes with two. Let's go. You ready? I'm on slow speed. There's our zip. Just when you thought it was all covered up. <laughs> okay, I'm through the zip. I'm in the foam. I'll go as deep as I can. Hopefully it's not too thick right here. Hopefully it is thick. I mean, I mean like eight inches thick. Right. There we go. All right, that's nice. See if she fits. Oh man, so nice. What were we worried about? That was so easy. Now, we were talking about maybe angling this. Oh, I don't even fit anyway. Right. I don't think angle would ever work. So let's get the level. We'll level it. We'll cut a little triangular filler right here out of the same material that we made this out of. It's perfect, right? Yep. We'll caulk around it, screw it to the building, and this one's done. We just got the other two. And it's going to look great when it's painted. And honestly, Jordan, I don't think you're ever going to see that from the ground. Right. Unless you're way in the backyard. So remember, this is our fresh air for the ERV. It's going to be nice and clean, nice and shaded over here all the time. Oh, man. We got a breach. That must be the one that fell off the roof and it broke. All right, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> oh, and it never happens to an empty tube one, right? It's always one that's almost full. All right, there's my little triangle piece, guys. That's just a drop from our siding, so I know it's the right angle. I've already got it marked. I'm just going to squish it in place. Boom. And I've got all these pre-drilled because it's cement, right? And Jordan wants to use this stainless steel screws to attach this to our building. And these aren't going to drill through that. So I think I'm ready to go, bud. Cool. I got to put some of this on the back of here now. You should just get another. Let's get another tube. All right. All hey, right, new tube. Let's put some on the hypotenuse. All right. Are we ready for yes. this guy? Oh, no. We're going to put Lexo back here, oh, right? Sure, sure. Of course. Looks pretty cool, man. Yeah, I agree. That turned out better than I thought, to be honest. Yeah, you were sweating that detail right here. Yep. You're gonna make it, ah, oh, look at this. I'm covered in paint. You know yep. what, You know why I know that's such good paint we bought? Why? That's two days and it still hadn't come off. Nice. Cheap paint, one bath and it's done. Not a bath. Yeah, you just told everybody you take baths. I don't take baths, I take a shower. <laughs> on the money right the hard part's gonna be squeezing in that attic space who gets to do that <laughs> perfect perfect yeah uh where we drilled our hole cool oh can you give me that bud this guy yeah yeah the right length and everything. You must be living right. A lot of comments about how tight this building is and how this building needs to breathe. This is its lungs right here, right? Mm -hmm. Basically connecting the lungs for the building. All right, you might have to help me. Oh, I got yep. it. Nice. It's not even that hot right here. What's the temperature outside? It's like 75. Oh man, a normal attic? We'd be roasting, right? Yep. This is very comfortable. Except for the position I'm in. <laughs> I'm basically in a continuous uh, like crunch, right? Right. With my abs. Yeah, you need an ab workout anyway. <laughs> Got 
I get it? Yeah, nailed it. Nailed it. Like. Yeah, you're good. You gonna cut that? Nope. Why? Oh, that's true. Yeah, just leave it, dude. You get out of there. That's a great job. Thank you. Oh yeah, right, dude. Is that how we're doing this? That's how we're doing it. Oh my gosh. Got the back side all painted, looks awesome. Got the west side here to do, we're gonna knock this out today. But before we can start painting this side, got a couple more penetrations to cut through the building so that our building can breathe. Right here, I got my right hand, that's the bathroom exhaust fan. And then over here, about six more feet, is the ERV exhaust. Now we had an ERV exhaust, dug but it didn't match the other one so i bought two that were alike so that when you're looking up this side of the building these two will match just a little detail jordan wanted that done so i ran to the store and got that second one that's gonna look great now i can't just start drilling holes right we got to think about where are our studs not really our studs it's the heel of our truss remember we got a truss right here and the top of our wall is about right here but remember we were doing the siding rad mark the freeze where our studs are and here's our nail so i know we got a heel of a truss here and a heel of a truss here. If I go in the middle, I'm all clear. But we had this little step. So remember on the other one, we put that little triangle. We made some rectangles out of siding. We're gonna nail it and let's sell it to the building here. Then we're gonna drill our hole through everything at one time. Now that we're on layout, how far is the bathroom exhaust duct from the ERV intake duct? It really matters, right? You don't want them next to each other. So it's recommended that they're 10 feet apart. We're in our fourth bay over here. We're way up on the roof on that side, around the corner. We measured everything, we are good to go. Like, next step, let's put in a little filler block and drill some holes. Got our little block in so this flushes out, more or less. It's not perfect, but it's gonna be fine. 28 feet in the air. Got my hole saw ready to go, but the cordless drill I used on the back of the roof was fine, but here, I'm hitting our soffit with it, so I switched to the big right angle drill. It fits, but I'm still at an angle a little bit. Another pesky soffit problem. I've got my drill bit right here on top of my block, on my mark. And as I drill, I'm going to push this up, so I'm drilling 90 degrees into the building. All right, bud. I think I'm all ready. Go. All right. <laughs> I cannot push where I am. I gotta stand up. I like that better anyway, because now the dust won't fall on me, right? But I also can't see what I'm doing. We got our hole all drilled, came out perfect, except I might've hit something inside, won't know until we go in there and see. 
But here's my second problem, my new problem, and I kind of knew this was gonna happen. This thing is so long, now I can't get it in there. I thought about cutting it, but check this out. Oh, I just said it, I said check this out. I can just take that off. We can shove this through the inside of the building, make it up on the outside, good to go. Jordan, you wanna go in there or you want me to go in there? We should both go in there. And, and sounds, see, like, sounds like the day just got longer. And see my damage? Yeah. Yeah, what a, what a dumb move. All right, but I think I can fix it. Let's go. Up here in the attic space above the stairs, check it out. I hit a wire. It looks like you hit two. <sighs> Let me get in here and check it out. I could probably count on one hand the number of things I've hit, but that was kind of a bonehead move. Those are the same two wires we were dodging way up over here. Should have had somebody in here, huh? Yep. Let me check this one first. This one's fine. Really? Yeah, this one right here in the front is for the our The insulation ER. is just cut. Yeah, it's for our ERV circuit. No, I didn't get it at all. They're, they're kind of fused together with the spray foam. Oh, cool. Let me break them apart. No, no, I was wrong. I, they were they were, they were were crossed over here. So the, the one I cut is for this, uh, there's a, my right hand is on a single gang junction box for the ERV power. So that's an easy fix. I'll just cut it back here, add a junction box and then a new wire to this existing junction box. So kind of dodged a bullet there, son. If I had to cut this 14-3, I would have had to put two junction boxes in. One over here, one over to the right with a piece in between. Dude, you are killing my R value, man. <laughs> well, this is kind of an important wire. We need this wire. It's for the ERV. The foam is so thick right here, it won't matter, bud. Like five inches thick. I mean, look. <laughs> you see that? This is kind of the first time we've ever had to do, like, remove spray foam around a wire repair. I'm actually glad it's up here, right? But instead of behind sheetrock. It does grab a hold of it. Oh, and it would be 12 too, right? Something that doesn't bend. Oh, that should be enough. Come on. I'm laughing about it. There we go. Now, that's enough. A rare look at backwards hat dad. <laughs> I had to. The brim was knocking into everything up here. Thread that through. Out of all the mishaps like this, this is pretty. It's pretty minor in my, pretty minor. my opinion, yeah, sure. Do you have a gnarly one that comes to mind when you think of a time? Was attaching a wooden fence to the outside of a house under a porch. So the fence was going to like be a little kennel for the dogs under the porch. And I screwed the post of the fence into the siding of the house. I was right under the window for the kitchen sink. The lag bolt went right into the cold water line for the kitchen sink. <laughs> so we had to fix all that. And everybody that's wondering, this is the ERV cord and it won't reach. So we are gonna have to put a box over here. Yeah, well, we'll have, in other words, I can't just put a receptacle on this new box. That's just gonna be a junction box. All right, let's change this wire, this guy to that junction box. All right, oh, I got a staple right there. And another one, of course, of course there's two staples. Who would have done that? Me, because one's just not enough. <laughs> Who's ever gonna see it? I am. All right, I need some tools, bud. What do you need? I need, uh, did I bring my diagonal cutters up here? No, I'll grab them. on the grill. Here, take the bus off. Get through there. Oh. <laughs> Might not make the tip. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys, since we switched brands for our exhaust vents here, 
This is too thick. The other one was a lot more streamlined. We were able to use this four inch bit, as you saw on the other side, and go straight in with this, and then slide this in. It was nice and beautiful. This design, not only is this metal piece bigger than, a little bit bigger than four inches, but now we have to account for this flange. This flange will not fit with a four inch bit. So we're gonna move up to four and a quarter, so it leaves room for this white flange here. We are really fighting this thing, which is why we're not filming it, because we're fighting it. So we're gonna switch to four and a quarter. Dad's gonna drill from the inside because we don't wanna be fooling up here with that on the scaffolding. And hopefully we'll get this thing in. This is one of those 15 minute jobs. Now we're into our third hour because I cut a wire. And now this hole is too small. Four inch hole worked perfect for the other one, but now it's too small for the other grill. So I got a four inch hole saw and a four and a quarter inch hole saw made up on this hole saw mandrel. The inner one's gonna guide the outer one. That's the plan. Let's see if we can finish this. Let's go. Hey, that, seemed to work perfect. that was perfect. That's the best thing that happened all day. <laughs> this might go because I don't have the, yeah. What's so hard about that? Man. All right, let's finish this. All right, we got our Lexel behind there. And we're in. Hello. Man, what a pain. Beauty is, the uh, other one The next one's gonna like take ten, five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, let's put some screws in it. All right, dude, I'm gonna drill this second hole. You go up in the attic, you watch for wires. All right. Yo. You are clear. I'm clear? You got a wire about three inches down. Are we good? Perfect. Nice. All right, guys, it is the next day. Finally got those two exhaust vents in last night. We tried to make everything up last night, and in my hurry, I ripped this duct, so now it's too short. Had to go back to the store again and buy a 90. I've already got it made up in this one. So I just gotta make up this duct right here, make up the other one, and I can get out of this little attic. Let's get it done. And so the idea is to pull this insulation boot. I got a lot of it, pull it down and over all this. I got quite a bit of it left, but I don't have the, any of the inner duct left. All right, now I got eyes on it. We're gonna cut and tape, tape, tape. All right, I got that all made up. Now I'm just gonna pull the insulation down, and get this guy insulated. How's it look from where you are? Really Just good. Nice. All right. I would love to tape that, but that's going to be impossible for me. All right, guys, we've got our four inch. What is this, Jordan? Return for the ERV. Transitioning to an eight inch. We're kind of kinking right here. We don't like that. And this is kind of sagging. So I got a new strap. We're going to support this. That'll help out this kink. And it gives me a little more flex duck. And I can get rid of this one too. Pretty easy fix. So we're going to do it while we're here. All right, that looks a lot better. And the other thing it does for me, it gives me access to this switch, to this outlet box right here. And that's gonna be our outlet for our ERV. Cool, cool. let's go do that other side. All right, gang, another windy day. So we opted to brush and roll the rest of the soffit and the fascia, because we were tired of cleaning up all those little spots on the windows. Yeah, it's everywhere. Everywhere. We had a couple of comments from some painters and they said, dude, we brush and roll everything. It's better adhesion, it's more even. You don't have to worry about all that. And it's definitely harder than spraying, but you know, we got to clean up everything afterwards. So it's more work now, less work later. And it's looking good. Yeah. Almost done here, huh? Yep, look at that last little section. All right guys, dad and rat are working on that side. 
And we got a couple comments on our last video regarding this trim. And the comments had to do with this edge right here and how it wasn't the same color as the trim. We completely agree with you guys. We just didn't know the best way to do it, if we wanted to do it, if it was worth the extra time and effort. But after seeing how the front of the house looks and the side of the house looks, and reading the comments, we decided that we're gonna start doing it. Now, we're gonna start here, go to that side, do the three little windows. We'll tackle the front windows and the bathroom window another day, don't worry. But that's what it looks like. I already finished one. We got this really cool brush here, really cool. Dad picked this up at a, at a local store today. Really neat, really helpful. That's what it looks like unpainted. And this is what it looks like painted. Huh? And obviously that's the first coat. We gotta do a second coat. But that looks a billion times better, doesn't it? Doesn't that just look a billion times better? And we're gonna mix up some exact color with the paper white paint. And once I put two coats on here, we're gonna uh, re-caulk that joint so it's nice and clean and crisp. I think it looks freaking awesome. Here, another comparison, ready? Unpainted edge, painted edge. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Pretty sweet. All right, guys, we are so excited over here at the Stud Pack Dream Garage. Two coats of paper white from the band board all up. Windows have two coats. It's all done. Can't wait to start on the bottom. We tell you guys we read all the comments, and we do. And there was one comment Jordan read about picking the color for the white on the upper part of the building. The guy said, don't go with something brilliant white. And that was the best piece of advice Jordan could have used because he chose this nice, soft paper white. It's kind of reflective in this evening's sun, but if that would have been a bright white, we probably couldn't even look at it right now. But man, are we so excited with all the little details, the windows cut in, the sides cut in. We almost put up the sconces on the second story porch. Can't wait to see what those look like, but we do have that whole deck to trim out, and I'm sure one of us would have smashed one of them off the wall with a board. So we're gonna hold off on those. Can't wait to get the bottom color done. That's next. So get you a very fine paintbrush, cut in your like button, smash it for us. Please subscribe and drop a comment. If you're interested in some Stud Pack merch, head on over to BunkerBranding.com. We're easy to find and get yourself a short sleeve t-shirt. Things are starting to heat up and we'll see you right back here on the very next Stud Pack video.